Hello, welcome to OatStories.com. My name is Mrs. Elo Tiede. I am the founder and the writer of OatStories.com. OatStories.com is a world of very interesting, transforming, and um, inspiring true life stories. And I'm going to be reading to you the costly mistake. Are you a married woman who feels it's very okay to get close to other men aside your husband provided there are no strings attached? Please, I recommend that you listen to the story so you can tread cautiously. Now, I'll be reading to you the costly mistake. Hello, listeners. I am Mrs. K from Enugu State. I am in deep regret for a mistake I wish had never happened. As you listen, please learn from my mistake. And if you have any advice for me, please do me a favor by dropping it in the comment box of the story. I was happily married and blessed with three pretty girls. After about five years of marriage, my husband was opportune to get a job with an oil company. Sometimes he would stay up for two weeks to four weeks as the case may be. I and the girls always looked forward to his return. We always felt bad whenever he sets off to work because he spends more time at work than with us. In order to keep myself busy, I decided to go into palm oil business. My husband didn't really like the idea because he felt that we were already financially comfortable and the children needed me most, especially as he's always away from us. I didn't listen anyways, so I went ahead. I had only gone into the business for eight months when I met Mrs. JJ, who used to live next door to my parents. I knew her since childhood and grew up together with her children. She used to process palm oil for a living then, but I didn't know that she still does until I was referred to her by a co-palm oil dealer. So I decided to patronize her. She was so happy to see me and I became her very good customer. Her palm oil was so good that my business began to spring up very fast due to the very high demand for the oil. Mrs. JJ Doe, I called her mama, processed the oil while I supplied it to both wholesale and retail buyers. So one day, as I was at mama's place for business, Sammy came in. Sammy is Mama's son. I recognized him at once. We exchanged greetings, shared a little memories, and collected each other's contacts. Sammy kept calling me. At first, once every week, and then it became as often as every day, and whenever I knew my husband was home, he wouldn't call. Though he wasn't married, there was nothing special about our friendship from my end. I regarded him as a friend. He never sounded emotional. He just checked on me and my kids and would readily offer a helping hand whenever necessary. Well, all this happened without my husband's knowledge. One day, as I was returning home, I decided to stop by at Sammy's house to give him an unexpected and brief visit. Of course, he was surprised. He offered me a drink and expressed how excited he was to see me. I thanked him for the soft drink and he immediately started to gulp it down my thirsty throat. I guess the force with which I drank was too much because it made me choke a little. As I tried to catch my breath, I mistakenly spilled the leftover drink on my skirt. In order for me to tidy up my stained skirt, it led me to the visitor's bathroom so I could clean up myself. And after about a few minutes, I was out and told him that I wanted to take my leave. But to my amazement, he just kept staring at me in a smile without saying a word. Then he walked up to me and hugged me tight and said, I have always loved you right from the days of our youth. It hurts me that you're married now. I just wish you could stay a little longer. Yes, I stayed. And because we have been communicating frequently for the past six months, it was not difficult for me to give myself to him. After that day, things returned to normal. 
Though our rate of communication was as frequent as it was before, we never ever discussed about my visit to his place. Two months after my visit to Sammy's house, my husband didn't return home. He said he needed to work extra time for some more money. During that time, I noticed that I had missed my period. So, I took a pregnancy test that confirmed that I was pregnant. I knew Sammy was responsible, but I didn't know what to do. I was in deep confusion. In fact, I panicked. Oh my God, what do I tell my husband? It's been two months since he left home. So, I called Sammy after some days. Hmm, Sammy wowed me. Guess what he did on hearing the unexpected news? So, I was, as I was saying, I called Sammy to inform him about the pregnancy and to cut the long story short. He denied it. He told me that he thought I was matured and that he didn't know I could be so careless to get him pregnant. Sincerely, I was seriously thrown into utter confusion because I was left with no other option than to go for an abortion. Well, on the night before the day I had scheduled for the abortion, I had a terrible dream. I saw people gathered in black beside a grave. They were all consoling my husband and children. Everyone were in tears. And then I suddenly woke up. I was so scared because I knew what that dream meant. I thought to myself, if I don't go for this abortion, what else will I do? Finally, after about an hour of intense thinking and worrying, I made up my mind. Yes, I did it. I kept the pregnancy. Not for Sammy anyways, but for my husband because I had no other option besides going for an abortion. And I wasn't ready to die either. My husband finally returned from work about a week later and he was really happy to hear the news when I broke it to him. Since he trusted me so much, he didn't even cross his mind to ask me questions about how, when, and how old the pregnancy was. He only rejoiced and took me out for dinner to further the celebration. Eight months after, I gave birth to a healthy, handsome, bouncing baby boy. My husband loved him so much because it turned out to be the most intelligent of all our children. Even though I later gave birth to another son for my husband... His love for Sammy's son never diminished. In fact, his love for him grew more. Well, it didn't matter to me as long as the boy is happy, my husband loves him, and I didn't have to lose my life trying to abort, I was satisfied with the way things were. After Sammy rejected the pregnancy, he never communicated with me. He never picked my calls. In fact, he moved out of his apartment. After my numerous attempts to reach him, I finally resolved to stop doing business with his mom, only for him to show up one day after his son clocked 20. He came to the house. I was so lucky that he didn't meet my husband. Perhaps he could bully come in because he saw my husband leave the house. He was begging seriously for my forgiveness. He said he was sorry for his actions. In fact, his knees were on the floor until I forgave him. Seeing that I had forgiven him, he got up thankfully and then he asked me for a favor. He wanted to know what I did to the pregnancy. I laughed at first. Then seeing how sincere his apology sounded, I decided to tell him all that happened. He started begging all over again and then thanked me for not aborting it. He thanked me with so much joy that I began to notice something was not right. He requested to see the boy, but I refused. It was at that point the tone of his voice changed. He began to scream at me. Where is my son? Where is my son? I must see him. He can't, you can't deny me of my rights. I broke down in tears, panicking heavily. So I began to beg him to reduce his voice, but he refused. Then suddenly, suddenly he calmed down and began to cry. After about 15 minutes, he got up and told me that he was giving me just two weeks to sort things out and return his son to him. Then he left. My listeners, it felt like my whole world was crumbling. I didn't know how to face my husband to tell him that his favorite and most cherished child is for someone else. I knew my husband would hate me for life. So I quickly ran to Sammy's mother and narrated everything to her. 
It was then I knew the reason why Sammy suddenly showed up. He really didn't want to have anything to do with the boy. In fact, he showed up because there was fire on the mountain. He had used his manhood to secure a political position. Knowing that he would no longer be able to have children, he had decided to come for his once rejected child in a cunning way. I felt weighed down because under the circumstance behind his return, I was so sure that he would never give up on demanding for his son, undermining that it could ruin my marriage. Well, it, did it didn't end in divorce. Because of Sammy's desperation, he went ahead to tell my husband. Yes, it broke my husband. He couldn't bear it at all. He couldn't believe that his favorite child who had brought him so much joy and honor wasn't his at all. After my husband heard what I had to say about the matter, he then asked the boy to do what he wanted. Surprisingly, Samson looked at Sammy and thanked him for eventually owning up to his responsibility as a father. Then he promised to keep the truth about his paternity in mind and went ahead to say that it would be just unfair to walk away from a man who had brought him up with so much love. In short, Samson told Sammy off. My husband was indeed very happy because it would have been so difficult for him to let go of the boy. Well, even though my marriage remained, a lot of things changed so much that I still live in deep regret today. My husband's love and trust for me diminished greatly. He pays no attention to me anymore. At any slight disagreement, he makes comments about not being sure that... He is really the father of the other kids. Even his relationship with Samson has changed, though it's not that bad. Even my children now treat me with great disregard and anger. To end it all, sometimes I wish I hadn't gone too close to a man aside my husband. And other times, I wish I never told Sammy that I was pregnant. At least he wouldn't have known. I should have kept it all to myself. So listeners out there, I didn't take this time out to entertain you. I really want you to pick a good lesson from my painful mistake. I sincerely promise to write SotiStories.com again if things finally get better or even worse than it is already. Thank you all. Well, this brings us to the end of the story, The Costly Mistake. I hope you've learned from it. Thank you for listening and goodbye. See you in the next story.